we'll continue with entailment, okay? We'll continue with entailment. So let me do a recap. Let me do a recap of what in entailment is. So entailment, as we studied last time, entailment is a relationship between two statements, right? That uh, if one statement is true, uh, the other statement must always be true. So that's the kind of relationship that we call entailment, okay? Uh, if P is true, that's one statement. The, the statement Q has to always be true, right? And then um, there's a test for um, entailment. You call that redundancy test. And you can use in fact or not only that to join two statements. And if they sound redundant, it means they are um, entailments, right? I'm sorry. And also but, the word but, right? So you use in fact and but uh, to join two statements. And if they, are in con uh, they sound redundant, then it means you have an entailment. Uh, the redundancy test works because when you have an entailment, um, you usually um, have the second statement as being included or being part of the first statement, right? So if you say the second statement once again, it will sound redundant. So that's why the redundancy test works. And last time we looked at uh, some practice questions um, and we, I don't think we finished that. So we'll continue with that and then we'll move on to the next type of meaning. So this is um, uh, from last time. So we stop at number eight, okay? So disregard all these things. Um, where are we? Number, <clears throat> number eight. Uh, Pyong Hee saw a big cow and Pyong Hee saw a big animal. Does the first one entail the second one or not? If he saw a big cow, does it always mean that he saw a big animal? Yes or no? Really? Really? Again, if P is true, Q has to always be true, right? So he saw a big cow. Let's suppose that the cow is big, so that's true, right? And does it necessarily mean that a big cow is a big animal? Really? Uh, a whale is a big animal, isn't it? An, a a an elephant is also a big animal. But if you compare a cow to a dinosaur, for example, I mean a cow is not a big animal, right? In that case, so P, uh, Pyong Hee saw a big animal. It's not necessarily true. It depends on what you compare it to, right? If you compare a cow to a dinosaur, then a cow is like, I don't know, an ant. So it's not a big animal in that sense, OK? So it's not necessarily a big animal, OK? A big cow. Um, a tall pygmy came in, and um, a tall person came in. You know, pygmy is, um, in, in, in Korean, uh, hobbit, <laughs> right? Hobbit. So a tall pygmy is a tall, is a tall hobbit, <laughs> OK? Is a tall hobbit. So does it mean that a tall hobbit, a, a tall pygmy, not a tall hobbit, a tall pygmy is a tall person or not? No, not necessarily, right? Even though he's tall, he could still be a pygmy in comparison to uh, a taller person, right? A normal person. So no, no entailment there, OK? Um, and then we went in a small bus. We went in a small vehicle. Does it mean that when we went in a small bus, we have to go in a small vehicle too? No, not necessarily, right? A small bus doesn't necessarily mean a small vehicle, right? It could be a big vehicle, too. So no. And number D, that was an exp expensive sandwich. That was an expensive meal. Um, does it entail that? No, right? Maybe the sandwich is expensive, but the whole meal is not expensive, right? So no, no relationship between, no entailment relationship between um, A to D, so no, okay? Oops, not that one, here. So no relationship. So Kyoho was wrong. Now, um, where are we? Number nine, 
Um, Hayong bought a big house and Hayong bought a big building. So does one entail the other? No, not necessarily, right? Um, a house is not necessarily a building, right? It could be an apartment, for example, just a room, for example, right? So no, no entailment relationship there. Um, next one, Yong Uk cooked an egg and Yong Uk bought an egg. Um, does the first one entail the second one or not? Does cook necessarily means boil? No, right? So no relationship. So the first one doesn't entail the second one. But if you switch the order, if you switch the order, Yong Uk boiled an egg and Yong Uk cooked an egg, for example, right? That is an entailment, right? So the first one entails the second one because when you boil it, you cook it in uh, boiling water, right? So it's more specific than that. So the first one entails the second one, okay? Um, next one, I saw a beautiful girl by the name of Tasom and I saw a person, right? This is an entailment thing, right? Because a beautiful girl is necessarily a person, okay? So, and the thief stole a car and the thief took a car. The first one necessarily entails the second, right? Because to steal is to take secretly, right? So this one works. And this is the last uh, question. 11, no one ha let, has led a perfect life and someone has led a perfect life. Is there any relationship between two, the two? No relationship, right? So no relationship between the two. Because no one ne <laughs> cannot mean someone, right? Uh, number B, we have just bought a dog, we have just bought something. <laughs> Correct, right? Um, when you define something, you can it could be a person, um, a thing, or an animal, for example. So it entails it. Um, next one. The house was concealed by the trees, and the house was hidden by the trees. Um, entails it or not? Does the first one entail the second one or not? Yes, right? Because conceal means hidden, right? And in this case, they are kind of synonym of each other. So the second one also entails the first one, okay? So it's like two ways in this case, even. P entails Q and Q entails a P. Because they are perfect, synony uh, synonymous, perfectly synonymous. Uh, number D, I ran to the house and I went to the house. Yes, right? So P entails Q because to ran to, meaning to go uh, to that place uh, with speed, right? So it entails it. But, you know, this is out, outside of the scope of this entailment, okay? When to doesn't necessarily mean uh, went into, okay? So when to, he can just be at the entrance of the house, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he actually went into the house. So to and into are not the same prepositions. Um, number E is hard to lasso elephants, and elephants are hard to lasso. Um, they are the same, right? They say the same thing, right? So they, they are perfect entailments of each other. So P entails Q and Q entails A. So um, it's just a matter of syntax, right? So you have the it here, right? Uh, we call it expletive, right? Which means it doesn't refer to anything in particular. And then in this case, you have the elephant as a subject, right? Which moves to, to, to the front, right? But it doesn't have any theta row, right? And so on. So, um, so this is what we call uh, entailment. And today we'll move on to the, uh, the second type of meaning. And the first type of meaning, the first type of meaning is the implication that we called um, entailment. Now the second type of meaning is what we call, we'll, I will use the slide here, uh, we'll call it presupposition, okay? Presupposition, so this is the second type which is different from the first type. So, um, presuppose, presuppose, suppose is to, to think, right? Suppose is to think, 
pre means before. So presuppose means to think before, right? So presuppositions are implications, meaning hidden meaning, that are in the background, meaning um, it's the background assumptions of the speaker. Okay? So the speaker has that background assumption. The speaker pre-thinks about something. Okay? And this background assumption is taken for granted, meaning it doesn't have to be said. Taken for granted means it's readily believed. Okay? by the speaker in that context. So the speaker believes in that, right? And without necessarily having to say so, that I believe that this is the case. He doesn't need to say that I believe that X is the case. I, I believe that X is true. He doesn't have to say that because it's taken for granted, okay? And because he presupposes it. And so the speaker must have assumed that something to be the case, something to be true before saying that uh, statement. And it's the speaker, not the sentence, that has the presupposition. So this is the point where presupposition is different from an entailment, right? Because the presupposition is the speaker's um, assumption, whereas the entailment is the meaning that comes out as a result of two, two statements, right? Being in a relationship. It not, not the speaker, but for presupposition, is the speaker. Um, examples of presuppositions. So these are all presuppositions. So Hye Min and Min Kung are the only twins in the School of Humanities, but actually no, there are other twins. So, so whenever someone says this, that Hye Min and Min Kung are the only twins in the in Munde, um, it presupposes that uh, Hye Min and Min Kyung exist, right? If we say that you know they are the twins, it means that they exist in in Munde, for example, right? And the school of humanities even exists, right? And then Tasom, uh, next one. Tasom keeps a gumiho, which is a nine-tailed fox, in as a pet in the backyard of her Pusan house, for example. So this, when someone says this, it means that there is a person by the name of Tasom. There is such a thing called gumiho in reality, and uh, she has a Tasom has a pet, and she has a, a house in Pusan, and also she has the backyard. Uh, in her house. So this is a result of the speaker's presupposition. So the speaker doesn't have to say that, I believe that there is a person by the name of Tasom. I believe that she has a house in Busan. No, but by just saying this, it means that he takes that, uh, that information for granted. Right? Uh, Jaewon, the next one. Jaewon says to me, where is my girlfriend? So he asked that question because he presupposes that there is such a person to be his girlfriend, right? Which may or may not be true, but that's what he presupposes anyway. So where's my girlfriend? It means that his girlfriend exists somewhere, but he doesn't know where. But he <laughs> believes that his girlfriend exists. So that's his presupposition, okay? Um, so presupposition is different from entailment. Um, a presupposition is different from an entailment in that for the entailment, um, for the entailment, um, the Q, you have a P and a Q, right, in the entailment. The Q statement will change depending on the P, right? So if the P is not true, then the Q might change, right? But for presupposition, it doesn't matter what you do to the, uh, to the original statement, the presupposition will still hold, regardless of whatever you do. So, for example, in this case, the Queen of England wears a hat, okay? Um, this is the entailment, okay? I, I will skip that because we understand what an entailment is. Now, it presupposes that there is such a thing called, um, a person called the Queen of England, right? And now, whatever you do to that statement, to that original statement, you take it as a P statement, okay? Uh, whatever operations, syntactic operations you do to the presupposition, to the, uh, I'm sorry, whatever syntactic operation you do to the original sentence, the presupposition is still there. So if you do this, uh, I use this to, to show negation. If you put not, okay, if you put not, if you negate the sentence, the Queen of England doesn't wear a hat, right? From wears a hat to doesn't, so you negate it. If, when you negate it, the Queen of England doesn't wear a hat it still holds, right, that the Queen of England exists, right? She, she just doesn't wear the hat, 
but still she exists. So that is one syntactic operation. And the second syntactic operation is when you put it into a question, does the Queen of England wear a hat? Still, it, it, uh, it assumed that uh, Queen of England exists, right? Uh, or mo uh, MS, meaning uh, modelize. You modelize it, putting words like may or can, whatever, right? Um, is it possible or the Queen of England may wear a hat? Still, um, the person who says that presupposes that Queen of England exists. And then CS meaning conditionalize. You conditionalize it, putting it in an if clause. If the Queen of England wears a hat, then she'll take it, blah, blah, blah. But it still presupposes that she exists. Right? So no matter what syntactic operation you do to that um, original sentence, to the P statement, the, uh, the presupposition still holds, okay? which is different from the entailment. Right? Um, if you do something to the original statement, if you question it, put it into a question, if you negate it, the truth value of the, uh, uh, the Q statement will change. Okay? And um, there are many kinds of presupposition, and we call them presupposition triggers. So a lot of things can trigger a presupposition. So for example, when we have uh, definite referring expressions, um, Usually, when we have the word the or uh, the, the, the is the definite article, right? Or when we have um, things like mm, possessive uh, adjectives like your or my, like that, right? The well known social butterfly in Inmun Day is El Pyong Wan, for example. The here, it, it presumes that that person exists, right? So, this is what we call existential presupposition. So, uh, it presumes that he or she exists. You know, social butterfly? You know butterfly, right? A butterfly likes to go from one flower to another flower, uh, trying to find, <laughs> right? And then in, uh, he is a social butterfly, meaning he talks to everyone, and everyone knows him, right? So this is an example of a social butterfly. So everyone knows him in In Munde. Uh, the current king of, in, uh, of Korea didn't or visited Hanyang, for example. The here presumes that there, uh, the speaker believes that uh, the king of Korea exists, right? Uh, Sung Won will or won't take Krista course next semester. Doesn't matter if you have it in the positive or negative um, range, um, it still presupposes that Sung Won exists, right? Because it's a definite expression. Or your car looks or doesn't look nice. In this case, your car, the speaker presupposes or thinks or believes that uh, the listener has a car, for example. So we call that existential presupposition. Uh, the second type of presupposition is change of state words. So we call that lexical presupposition. It has to do with words, right? So start, stop, continue, manage, and again, uh, they indicate that something has changed. So something is different from the previous state. Students in English 374 started or didn't start reviewing for the exam, right? Start or didn't start, meaning that they hadn't done that before. So there's a change of state from start, right? When you say start. Or Tom has to take TOEIC again, right? So again here means that he took it before, right? Whatever, uh, whatever the results w were, right? So again, uh, involved a change of state. Or CLEF, this is just a syntactic operation. Um, CLEF, uh, CLEF sentences here when you front something, right? using the WH word or when you use the it, uh, is, blah, blah, blah. What Kyungmo wants to fill the void in his heart is someone, right? So it presupposes that he wants something or someone to fill the void in his heart, for example, right? So uh, when you front it, that's what you presuppose. Uh, it wasn't, was or wasn't his wallet that Bill lost. Bill lost something, right? So it doesn't, mean, doesn't have to be wallet, but something is lost, right? So why did Su Young buy her bag? It means that he, she must have bought her bag before, right? And so on. How many times does Jun Song go clubbing in a week? So if someone asks that question, it means that he presupposes that he goes to different clubs, right, in a week, right? And maybe more than one time, too, plural, right? Um, and then special terms of address um, not exist in, not, not, not uh, quite a few, uh, quite just uh, very few in uh, English, but a lot in Korean. So Hyung, for example, you can assume that the person who uses Hyung uh, calls someone who is older, right, but close, that kind of thing, right? Um, and then 
uh, factive presupposition. So in this case, uh, it contains verb that um, indicates something as factual, right? For example, everybody knows Chris Dai is the best professor at Hanyang. Or even if you negate it, nobody knows Chris Dai is the best professor. Doesn't matter if everybody knows or nobody knows. Still, the presupposition is Chris Dai is the best professor, right? Still, that <laughs> may be true. Or we regret or we don't regret telling her. So regret or don't regret, it already means that you already told her, right? Uh, it isn't odd, it is odd that he left early. It already included in the fact that, uh, the fact that he left early is already presupposed, right? I didn't realize Mary was ill, so it means whether you realize it or not, Mary was ill, right, and so on. And then uh, there are other two kinds like non-factive and counterfactual. Uh, when you use the if clause, for example, if you use the past tense, it presupposes that the uh, reality is usually counterfactual, not real, right? Far from reality, and so on, okay? So um, in terms of the um, presupposition test, um, not the presupposition test, but in terms of the truth conditional uh, chart, um, you will see that uh, for presupposition, um, Whatever you do, let's focus on the first two. For presupposition, whatever you do to the original clause, whatever you do to the original statement, the presupposition is still the same, meaning the presupposition still hold, okay? But for the entailment, the, presuppos uh, the entailment part, the Q part may change uh, when you do some operation to the, to the original statement. So that's the second type of um, presupposition. Uh, of meaning, which we call presupposition. And the last thing is, um, so this is just a summary, okay? So when you test for an entailment, you use the redundancy test, and when you test for a presupposition, you use any of the syntactic operations. You can modelize it, you can conditionalize it, you can negate it, um, and you can put it into a question and uh, test whether that presupposition still hold or not. It must still hold. Okay, if it's uh, a presupposition. So now that you understand the two types of meaning, we'll do some practice um, with presupposition and entailment. So I'll use this handout for uh, further practice. So uh, we'll uh, use this handout, okay? And most of your guys' names are on here. So um, now we want to check whether uh, some statements are entailments or whether they are presuppositions of the original statement. So uh, we'll check both, the entailment and presupposition. So we just have to check both. Uh, for example, in number one, the original statement, the P statement is, Jun Hyok inherited a farm. Inherited meaning he uh, got passed, the, the farm got passed along to him, right? Um, so A and B, we have Jun Hyok owned a farm and Jun Hyok owns a farm, which is a fact that the first one is, like the past tense, okay? So, does the original statement entail, let's talk about entailment first, does it entail A, Jun Hyok owned a farm? When you say uh, Jun Hyok inherited a farm, does it mean Jun Hyok owned a farm? Entail, does it entail that? What does it mean to inherit? that thing got passed along to you legally, right? So it's legal property that got passed along to you. So like you got it uh, from your father, for example, in a will, right? So at least he must have owned a farm, right? Even though he might, uh, he might have sold it to other people after the inheritance, for a moment, for one second at least, he owns a farm, right? At least. At, in, in one second even, right? So it entails it. But does it entail, when someone says he inherited a farm, does it entail that he still owns a farm or not? No, right? He may have sold it to someone else or he may have given it to someone else. So it doesn't entail B. Okay, in this case. So we are done with entailment. Now, for the presupposition, 
when we check for a presupposition, we use one of the syntactic op uh, operations, right? So can you question, can you question the, can you make the original statement into a question? Did Jun Hyok inherit a farm? Did Jun Hyok inherit a farm? So A and B still hold or not? Or he didn't inherit a farm. Let's uh, negate it. He didn't inherit a farm. So A and B still hold or not? No way, right? So no presupposition. Or even when you modelize it, when you modelize it, Jun Hyok may, Jun Hyok might have inherited a farm, right? Does it mean he owned a farm? He might have? No, not necessarily. Or he owns a farm? No, not necessarily, right? So when you negate, when you modelize, when you um, make it into a question, A and B, I mean, are gone, right? So in this case, no presupposition, okay? So that's how we do it. Um, let's do three, uh, number two and number three together. Uh, Ji He has stopped smoking. So this is a change of state verb, right? Stop meaning a change of state verb, right? So does it entail that she does not smoke now? Uh, entailment first, let's do entailment. So when somebody, somebody says Ji He has stopped smoking, does it mean uh, she doesn't smoke now? Yes, right, she stopped smoking then it, it, it really entails A, right? So entails, it entails A. What about uh, the second one? Jihee has stopped smoking, and does it mean that Jihee used to smoke? Uh, used to smoke? Does it entail that or not? Yes or no? In every situation when Jihee has stopped smoking, it means that she used to smoke or no? Yes, right? So it entails B. Now, let's do presupposition. So, Jihi has stopped smoking. Can you make it into a question? Has Jihi stopped smoking? So, Jihi doesn't smoke now. Does it, does it still hold? Has she stopped smoking yet? And Jihi doesn't smoke now. No, right? So, it doesn't presuppose no presupposition for A. But Jihee has stopped smoking, did, uh, or has Jihee stopped smoking? It's presupposed that she smoked before. So presuppose B. So B is presupposed. Okay, so that's how we do it. Number three, which I love. Uh, Tasom knows that Krista is handsome. And A, Krista is handsome. Does it entail it? Does it entail it? If someone says, Tasom knows that Chris Dai is handsome, does it mean, necessarily mean that Chris Dai is handsome? Really? Why? 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 If Chris Dai is not handsome in reality, okay? If, if he is not handsome, then it means that what Tasom knows is wrong. So she doesn't know it then, right? You, you understand this? So when you say that she knows, it means no, to know something is to mean that, to know something means that that thing is correct, right? If that thing is not correct, then she doesn't know it, obviously, right? So to know means to be correct 100% of the time. <laughs> if this is not correct, then she doesn't know it, of course, right? But if you didn't, if you say that she knows it, then it means that the information must be correct, right? So knowledge, what is knowledge? Knowledge is fact, right? Knowledge is fact. So this is fact. So this, this <laughs> statement, Chris Dye is handsome, is entailed. 
by the first one. So it entails B. Uh, I'm sorry, it entails A. So in every situation when she knows that Krista is handsome, Krista must be handsome. Because if Krista is not handsome, then she doesn't know it, obviously, right? So that's a good one. And also, <laughs> does, it presuppose, does it presuppose A? So when you say that, uh, when a, a person says that Tasom knows that Krista is handsome, does it presuppose A too? Yes, right? You can question it. Does Tasom know that Krista is handsome? Tasom doesn't know that Krista is handsome. Even though she doesn't know, then Tasom doesn't know that Krista is handsome, then Krista is still handsome, right? So <laughs> it presupposes it. A. Okay? So when you want to do um, test the presupposition, you just uh, do one of the syntactic operations. Um, number four, um, is sunny today? Does uh, entailment first? Does it necessarily means, uh, mean that it's warm today? A lot of times it does, right? Sunny means warm. But in other times, no, right? In the winter in Seoul, for example, it's sunny, but it doesn't mean that it's warm, right? In the winter when it snows, for example. So no entailment, right? For sure. Because entailment is a necessarily a relationship, right, between the two statements. So it's not always that it has to be warm when it's sunny, right? What about presupposition? Is it sunny today? <laughs> the statement A still holds or not? No, right? Is it sunny today? The speaker is not even sure. So no presupposition. Mm, number five, um, S. Kyung Wan and So Yeon are married. Does it mean, does it entail that they are married to each other? When you say this sentence, they are, uh, S. Kyung and uh, so Hyun are married. Does it mean that they are married to each other? No, right? Not necessarily. Because when you say S. Kyung Wan and So Hyun are married, they may be married to other people, right? Each of them. So no entailment there. Because entailment has to be like a necessary relationship between both, right? And presupposition, can you just do the, one of the syntactic operations? Are they married? <laughs> it doesn't mean that they are married together even, right? So no presupposition either. Okay. So we'll keep doing this um, for the rest of the um, exercises here. So I'll give you maybe uh, 10 or 15 minutes to work on these questions, and then we'll come back and I'll walk around to help you. So you guys, let's look at the exercises together. So number six, every student will go to the party, and some student will go to the party. So let's take a look at uh, entailment first. So if this sentence is true, every st student will go to the party, is it also true, would it also be true that some student will go to the party? For sure, right? So there is an entailment there. And then for presupposition, is this what uh, the speaker is A, what the speaker believes before or at the time when he says every student will go to the party? Is it what he believes as well? Right? Does uh, the original statement presuppose this? You just make it into a question or you just uh, maybe negate it. So make it into a question. Will everybody, will everybody go to the party? Will everybody go to the party? Well, they will or they will not. But it doesn't mean that some will go, right? No, it might be no one, right? So no presupposition. Because the presupposition is gone, right? The belief is gone. Uh, I'm sorry, the belief has to be there if it's a presupposition, whatever you do to the original statement. But here, um, the statement A is gone when you question it, right? The speaker is not even sure 
about how many people will go or whether they, there's anyone that will go at all. So this is not what the speaker believes, right? <laughs> Number seven, some students will go to the party and not everyone will go to the party. Entailment first. If some students will go to the party, does it mean that not every student will go to the party? Yes or no? In all situations when some students go to the party, does it mean that not every student will go to the party? Is it necessarily true that if some go, it also means not everyone will go? No, right? Because all can go, right? All can go. When you say some students will go to the party, it also means all can go, right? Because it could mean all can go, so there's no entailment. You understand this? That when you have an entailment, it must always be true. There will be no exception, right? So when some students will go to the party, if that's true, some will go, right? Um, is it always true that not everyone will go? No, right? Not necessarily, because all can go, right? All can go to the party. And all includes some already, right? And for presupposition, you just question it. Will some students go to the party? And so on, right? Some students won't go to the party, right? And um, so, um, does it presuppose it or not? Will some student go to the party? Right? So in this case, no, because the speaker is not even sure yet. Next one, Sungok and Kyongmo are rich. Does it entail, does it also mean, or does it have to mean that Sungok is rich? Yes or no? Yes or no? Is there, an, is there any exception, if we talk about entailment, is there any exception that Sungok is not rich? If they, are, they both are rich, can you think of an exception when Sungok is not rich? There can be an exception like that, right? If Kyongmo has a million dollar and Sungok has zero, but they combine their wealth, right? Let's, let's say they combine their wealth, right? So both are rich, right? They live in the same house, they join the same account. They have the, the name, they have the two names on the same account, Shin Han Bank, Sungok and Kyongmo, with a million dollars, right? In there, both of them are rich, but Sungok may own like zero or may own like only $10 in there. Right? Because rich is a, a, a kind of a com combination thing, right? Rich, richness can be a combination thing. So it doesn't have to mean that Songok is rich too. It could be only Kyongmo, right? So no, no entailment there. And then if you think about presupposition, are Songok and Kyongmo rich? It, this doesn't hold, right? So no presupposition. So when you read or when you say thing or when you uh, when you think about the, what what people say, just don't don't take it for more than what is said. If they say Sungok and Kyongmo are rich, it doesn't mean that Sungok is rich or Kyongmo is rich. Both could combine their wealth, and that's what we call richness. Okay. Um, number nine, Hyung Sop ate oatmeal for breakfast this morning. Um, does it entail that he ate breakfast this morning? Yes, right, for sure, right? If he ate oatmeal for breakfast, then he must have eaten breakfast for sure. So entailment, yes. Uh, presupposition, so somebody who says that 
Hyung Sop ate oatmeal for breakfast this morning. Does he believe that uh, he ate breakfast this morning? Yes, right? So can you, can you uh, make it into a question? Did Hyung Sop eat oatmeal for breakfast? <coughs> did Hyung Sop ate oatmeal for breakfast? Yes, he did eat oatmeal, um, or he didn't eat oatmeal for breakfast, but still, he ate breakfast, right? Maybe it's oatmeal or not, we don't know, but we know for sure that he ate breakfast. So, presupposition too. Or if you negate it, Hyung Sop didn't eat oatmeal for breakfast, he ate uh, fried egg for breakfast. He still ate breakfast, right? Um, number 10. Eugene used to swim a mile daily, and Eugene no longer swims a mile daily. Does A until, uh, does P until Q or not? Eugene used to swim a mile daily. Does it necessarily mean that she no longer swims a mile daily right now? No, right? No entailment. Why? Because when you say she used to, that's what she did in the past, but now she may or she may not do it, right? We don't know because an entailment is a necessarily relationship, right? So you can say Eugene used to swim a mile daily and in fact, she still does. And in fact, she still does, right? No redundancy there. In fact, she still swim on my daily today. And for presupposition, you just ask the question, did Eugene used to swim a mile daily, right? Uh, yes, she did, and no, she didn't. So it doesn't have to do with right now, okay? So no presupposition either. So for those people, for those people who believe that used to only refers to the things in the past, that's true, but it doesn't imply that the situation is no longer valid. So for those of you who think that uh, used to <coughs> implies that the situation, the past situation is not ongoing, that's wrong because it's not implied there. Okay? Um, number 11, Al Kyung Wan's older brother texted him during class time. Does it entail that he has an older brother? Yes, right, of course. So entailment, yes. And for presupposition, it's the same thing, right? There's presupposition also. If you say, did Al Kyung Wan's older brother text him during class time? Yes, he did, or no, he didn't. Still, um, the person assumes that he has a brother, so presupposition. Mm, number 12, after Zhang Wan painted the walls, uh, Esau installed the cabinet, um, and then does it entail that, she, uh, that Zhang Wan painted the walls? Yes, for sure, right? So entailment, yes. And for presupposition, still the same, right? It presupposes it. And when you make a question out of this, do it um, on the main clause. So did uh, Esau install the cabinets after uh, Zhang Wan painted the wall, right? Yes or no? So it doesn't matter. The presupposition still holds. Now, number 13. If Hyunwoo earns an A from English 374, which is this class, he can graduate this year. And um, the question is whether A is an entailment of that statement or not. Is it or is it not an entailment? So if he doesn't earn an A from this class, then he cannot graduate this year. Is it necessarily true? If he earns an A, he can graduate this year. What about if he doesn't earn an A? Do you think that he can or cannot graduate?
does it entail it or not? No, right? No entailment. He can graduate if, for example, he gets an A plus in the other class, for example, right? There are exceptions like that, right? Um, just like um, I can link this to another if clause like this. If it rains, just a second, if it rains, the road uh, will get wet. If it doesn't rain, the road will not get wet. Just the same situation as that one. So there's no, pre, uh, there's no entailment there, right? If it rains, the road will get wet, for sure. We know that if it rains, the road will get wet, right? Without any kind of uh, covering system, right? We know for sure. But if it doesn't rain, the road can still get wet, right? In some situations, somebody pour water on the road, for example, right? Uh, or the snow melts, for example, right? So it's the same thing. So if you negate this, then uh, this is not necessarily uh, have to be negated, right? So it's the same thing here, right? If you negate the first one, then the second one doesn't have to be negated. So it's not entailment. Um, number 14, Tam bought a rose from Min Kyung. Um, and Tam bought a flower for Min Kyung. Mm. For the entailment, yes, right? Because a rose is a, a flower. And then there's no presupposition, right? Because if you question it, did Tam buy a rose, right? So that statement no longer holds, so no presupposition. Um, I have, let's see, I have, um, this one is like, the number 15 um, and 16, they are jokes. And the reason why they are funny is because of the entailment. Uh, number 15, you find this in an advertisement, okay? This is an advertisement. So the advertisement says, illiterate, asking a question to the reader, right? Illiterate, illiterate means you cannot read or write, right? Write today for help. <laughs> That's funny because when you, when you ask the question to the illiterate people, they it entails that they cannot read or write, right? But you, you tell them, just write to us so that we can teach you like that. So, so it's impossible, right? Because they, they cannot even read this, the whole sentence, right? So that's the joke in the advertisement. Or number 16, doctor, how many autopsies have you performed on dead people? So autopsies, like uh, post-mortem examination, right? Autopsy is like after death, we call it post-mortem examination, right? Mortem is dead. So all my autopsies have been performed on dead people, right? Because autopsy entails that you have to do that examination on dead people, right? So uh, the question is kind of funny. Uh, for the rest here, uh, we still have time. Um, I want you to uh, come up with uh, some presuppositions for these sentences. So for example, in number one is a question. It's not a statement, right? So in this case, you don't even have to like, do the test, right? Um, so when did Suyong stop baking? So the, the person who says this, what, what, what does he or she believe? Uh, when did Suyong stop baking? So there are many presuppositions possible, okay? So one is, uh, uh, there is an, uh, Su Young exists. A person by the name of Su Young exists, right? Because if that person didn't exist, then 
um, the speaker wouldn't have said that, right? And then what else? Suyong baked before, right? In the past. So that may be uh, the two presuppositions that can uh, be in that sense. Um, number two, Gyuho was unlucky again. Um, this one, the presupposition trigger is the word again, right? So when you say Gyuho was unlucky again, it means he was unlucky before, right? So he was unlucky before. And also there is uh, a person by the name of Gyuho that the speaker knows, for example. Number three, what did Ayong want to say? When a person asks that question, the person must believe that, uh, epistemic model, uh, the person must believe that she wants to say something, right? So she wants to say something. <laughs> or she wanted to say something. And there are, is a person by the name of Ayong, for example. Okay. Number four, Jun Song has yet to treat Krista at an upscale restaurant. <laughs> In this case, the speaker believes that, what does he believe? That Jun Song has not yet treated him at an upscale restaurant, has not treated Krista at an upscale restaurant yet. And Jun Song has to do it. <laughs> That's what a person believes in <laughs> when he says it. And there exists a person by the name of Krista and Suyong, uh, Jun Song, for example. Number five, so he doesn't print money anymore. <laughs> when you say that, it means the speaker believes that she used to print money before, right? At least. She used to print money before. Because the anymore means that. So that's what he or she believes in. And there is uh, a person by the name of Sohi, for example. So we'll come back on Monday and look at the last type of meaning. <laughs>